You're not going to run away from this your whole life. Frank! You need to be part of your family. I don't want to be a part of my family. But I'm traveling alone. But when you told me I should be what I want to be, that was just bullshit. Now that conversation changed my life. But I sure my name is Aurora Folks from the Nocturnal. Um, and just to start with Paul, um, you've been coined as the most versatile British guy in Hollywood, playing everyone from an AI to an intergalactic crime lord and now a closeted gay literature professor living a double life. Being the chameleon that you are, how did you find yourself tapping into this role? Oh, wow. Uh, that's a really lovely intro. And I, I don't have a great answer except that I do, um, you know, I, I think that I, I loved I loved the script beyond measure. Um, I, I loved Alan Ball's work and was very excited uh, to, 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 that, that he wanted me to do it. And then we spoke on the phone and I really fell in love and we felt really aligned on how, what we thought it was about and what we thought it could do and what we thought and who we thought it, it was for. And, um, and I felt, we, we, we both talked about our lives and our experiences and and um, I, I, and I asked I asked some really frank questions Frank I didn't mean the pun but I did I asked why 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 me and, and and is it okay that it's me and and is there a good is there is there a compelling reason for me to, 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 to for, for you to pick me um, and so we talked a lot about that, and I think we found some really good answers. And um, and the, and then we we had the best time making this film. I mean, just the best time. I, it, it was it was such a it was such a labor of love for everybody. We were very short on things like money and uh, and, <laughs> and cameras, uh, uh, but we were very. We had an abundance of, of uh, love and commitment from everybody making the movie. Well, that seemed like it brought everything together nicely um, with what you guys mm. did work with. And then Alan, um, in an earlier interview, you said it's not as easy to get smaller mm. movies made about humans. What were some of the challenges that you found, aside from some of the ones that you just named, but what were some of the challenges that you found in bringing this film together and why was it so important for you to create this kind of story in particular? Uh, I'm going to I'm going to answer your second question first. It's because those are the stories that I love. Uh, uh, I, I love stories about people dealing with the realities of being people alive in the world and how challenging it can be to live an authentic life in a world that is increasingly inauthentic. Um, but so much of uh, not just movies, but also television, television these days, so much is, is, so much larger than life or these these worlds that, that I love that stuff. I'm not saying that uh, that I don't. I'm just saying it's it's hard to get a little movie about people made. It took us a long time to uh, to find financing for this movie. And then once we did, we still had to make it with uh, very minimal uh, resources and time. And that was, uh, that was probably the biggest challenge because um, we had the, the dream cast, the perfect cast. Uh, I, I really liked uh, my cinematographer and production designer and costume designer. Um, but it was just the amount of time that we had and the amount of resources we had was, it was guerrilla filmmaking. We were so uh, lucky to have Khalid. Uh, who, who, absolutely. Who, who uh, shot this movie and made it made, made this movie look like it was a twenty five million dollar movie? You know, and we, we, he 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 is he was ex, he was just extraordinary. It's extraordinary. He's making a big movie in Saudi Arabia now, some big action movie. So oh. we may we we may have lost him. He may be a, a big time cinematographer after this. <clears throat> Okay, well, it, it came out really, really great. And just giving the, the many layers that, this, that there are to this film, what kinds of conversations are you really hoping are being sparked within the audience that watches it? I think, I, I never really know quite how to answer a question like that. I think if people are just really engaged and, <laughs> and really sort of like motivated to have conversations about it, that's enough for me. Um, 
it, as long as it affects people emotionally enough for them to want to process it later with their friends or their loved ones or people they've they've seen the movie with, that's I think that's great. Um, do I want them to like it? Of course, but uh, more importantly, I I would I would want them to be affected to be uh, emotionally affected by the story because I feel like it's, for me, it's very emotionally affecting. I see, well, it definitely affected me. I loved what I saw and it was a very um, emotionally heart-wrenching film, but I, I loved Thank it. You. And I just wanted to But say, it's also funny. Oh, no, it's very comical. There, it has, <laughs> it's, it's really, really great. And I enjoyed watching it. Thank you so much. And I'm humbled to have sat down with you guys virtually today. Thank, Thank you, you. Aurora. So nice to meet you, Aurora. Nice to meet you too, have a great day. You too. you too. How are you two doing today? Very good, thank you. Good, How are thank you? you. How are you doing? Very good. Very good. So I just want to start with Peter first. Um, it's not often that I feel like we see roles for people of color that are multi-layered and diverse, such as your character, Wally, who's a gay Saudi Muslim. What were your thoughts when this role came to you in the script? Oh, my, my thoughts were like uh, fantastic. This is exactly what my agenda is, <laughs> is to push diversity to be included in Hollywood because we don't get to see characters like that specifically from the Middle East. I mean, you know, um, after 9-11, the portrayal of Middle Eastern characters was either like, oh my God, they're amazing, like godlike, or they were like horrible right. terrorists. Uh, so it was, uh, the, the portrayal was not real. I mean, they're human beings, they're real people with, with, uh, with dreams and, and, and traumas and, and aspirations and all of that. And Wally had all these things. And I thought it was, you know, uh, a breath of fresh air really uh, to, to get to play a character like that. So I feel uh, intensely privileged and very lucky that lucky. way. And uh, Sophia, you were even quoted as saying, um, you try to take every job and experience to learn more. So given the various roles that you've played in the past, what did you find yourself taking away from Beth in this movie? Hmm. Ooh. Uh, well, I just love her uh, growth uh, in this story. And I love how she becomes this very confident person. And she takes that, that quote that uh, Paul says to her, not Paul, Frank, yeah. Paul the <laughs> actor, <laughs> where you just be who you want, be who you are, despite what other people say. Um, and just be confident in yourself. And th th it's hard to be confident for me personally. I find it, it's very, it's fairly hard. And sometimes you, you're in this like really tough situations where you just don't feel confident in what you're doing. Um, you know, and job that I, I find this job very stressful. I love it. I love it to death, but it is hard, uh, how stressful it is. So, um, uh, cause you constantly want to do well and you're like, this is being filmed and people are going to watch it. Um, but at the same time, I just feel like I got I got here so far and somehow I got this uh, role. So uh, and I just have to trust the director that this is what they want and, and just have to work well with them and be confident in yourself. And, and, and then with you being confident in yourself, you will uh, be better uh, as an actor and as a person. And so that is what I try to take away from Beth. <laughs> Well, that was great. And actually that quote was one of my favorites in the film. Um, and speaking of the film itself, it does center around Frank, yet Beth and Wally kind of developed their own character arc throughout it while traveling together. What was your chemistry like filming on set and how did it aid your individual character development? Um, you know, I mean, I don't know if it's an actor thing. You read the script, you know what it should be, how the character is. And somehow uh, that happens. So in my, in my case with Sophia, it was, it was already there, the chemistry. I mean, I just had to look in her eyes and say the lines and getting to know her in the road trip. And, and that was it. That was pretty simple, actually. Uh, so I got lucky that way uh, in, this, in this aspect. <laughs> How about for you, Sophia? What he said, it's great. Uh, he's a great guy to work with, super funny. Uh, I thought he was really cheerful. Uh, uh, as a person and uh, I thought he was like yeah this is this is it this is Wally and he's also a, a great you know amazing cheerful person and <laughs> sometimes he says during uh it's like oh I'm not cheerful at all I'm like ah really 
<laughs> I thought you were great. Maybe you're just a really good actor. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I still, I still think you're 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 an amazing person to work with, and, and oh, extremely you. sweet. And and I, I felt really easy working with you and with those character with the those scenes. So I, yes, I think I'm also very lucky. Well, that's wonderful. The chemistry looks totally natural and super amazing. Very, very believable. And I loved it. And I can't wait for everyone else to see it and love it too. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with us virtually today. And I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much. Nice meeting you, Aurora. Nice Thanks. meeting you. So now both of you have periodically starred in a number of um, a variety of film, uh, stage and TV series throughout your careers. But what made you shift into the indie film kind of role and say yes to Uncle Frank? I wasn't shifting into an indie film, no. but, say, but saying yes to Uncle Frank was, was certainly because it was Alan Ball asking the question and presenting this lovely script. Um, but I, I remember when, uh, because I'm an old person, I remember when indie films were a very new thing. And, uh, and one was beginning to take a step into indie films because they hadn't really existed before. At least they hadn't been named as they be, they became, mm -hmm. you know, really, well, about the time, no, a little before the time when this film is set, actually, I guess, yeah. 60s, 70s, is that about when they started to be indie films. I've always enjoyed, I, I like doing independent film because I feel like you have a lot more freedom um, creatively and you usually have uh, a younger like crew that is like on their first or second job and they're excited to be there and everyone's sort of excited to be there and doing it because they love making movies not you know necessarily because of a paycheck <laughs> um, crossing your fingers and hoping that comes down the road but um, it's really like a for the love of the game kind of situation. That's wonderful. And, and in this film, while both of your characters are cut from the same Southern cloth set in the 70s, one is more set in her ways while the other kind of appears to be a little more open to societal changes. What sort of elements did you both find yourselves drawing from to lend to your role? Well, the age, you, the age we each are has a lot to do with it. And then, of course, Alan has given us the, uh, the characters drawn from his family that, that uh, he, he, he knew what they were like and he passed it on to us. Yeah, he wrote this beautiful script and these great characters. It was so easy um, to, to see who they were, even just reading them on the page. And I think that, like I drew a lot on, uh, on my, my maternal side of my family. It's very large and we have big family meals oh. and holidays and stuff. And so that was, that was pretty easy for me to tap into. That has to be very easy because it, it really gave to that familiar unit that you guys were playing into, which it was very natural for me to watch that. And um, if you could also describe just what it was like working with Alan as both the writer and the director, and how did you help bring his vision to life? Well, when you work with a writer director, you definitely want to get your lines right um, because, <laughs> because they know when you mess up. Um, and also because this is such a personal story for him, I felt like it was, like a like a dump it was doubly important that we get it right because i wanted to honor his his memory and and what he was saying in his family